Luke chapter number 17. If you got it, say I got it. We're going to read until you hear it. I hear your piano player. Listen, if y'all want to praise him, you can go ahead and praise him. I got a rule when I preach. Jesus can interrupt any time he wants to. And I truly believe if you really want something from God, you won't wait till the altar call. But you'll go ahead and lift a hand up and say hallelujah even right now. Luke chapter number 17. We're going to read until you're hearing verses 11. All the way down a couple of verses. If you got it, say I got it. If you don't, say wait a minute. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. Somebody have a lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, somebody holla as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. That's a whole sermon right there. Jesus answering and said, where there are not ten cleans, but where are the nine? Somebody say the nine. They are not found that return to give God glory. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I'm going to preach on a small topic quickly on tonight. Don't forget your thank you. Don't forget your thank you somebody holler don't forget your thank you you may be seated in the presence of the Lord ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters beloved congregation those that came far and wide to be here in this beautiful sanctuary today I want to address a topic that resonates with many of us the challenge of being misunderstood and criticized for our fervent dedication to serving God. Throughout history, we find inspiring examples of those who face opposition and resistance of those who've been perceived as in this Christian walk doing the most. On urban slang, we say in Indiana, be an extra. Somebody holler, be an extra. Being extra when it comes to our devotion to God. Let's take a journey back into ancient times. Moses chosen by God to lead the Israelites from the bondage of Egypt. Faced a lot of resistance from his own people. Many thought he was taking on too much for confronting the powerful Pharaoh. But yet Moses remained steadfast trusting in the guidance and strength provided by the almighty God even though he was successful in bringing them out of Egypt some still complained murmured and called them extra even in the story of Job we witness the devastating trials that Job endured. everybody knows about Job Job's own wife, beloved, said, man, you're doing too much. She encouraged him to curse God and die. But Job had something on the inside that said, why would I curse God and die when I can bless him and live? Yeah. He was doing, apparently to her, the most he was being extra. Somebody holler extra. 
maintaining his faith. And we know the story of Job. Job had the testimony. He got double for his trouble. Fast forward to the New Testament, the woman with the alabaster box. They thought she was doing too much. It was too expensive what she had. She was doing way too much, but yet she got her blessing. I love the story of the New Testament. It might be my favorite story. Blind Bartimaeus. He was considered as others that he was too loud. He was making too much ruckus and noise when he heard that Jesus was passing by. Many thought he was doing the most. Many thought he was just being a little bit too loud, but, but he was on a mission. He said, I got to get the testimony that I was blind, Yee, but now I see. But they still called him extra. My friend, the story reminds us when we choose to serve God with all our heart, we may encounter resistance and criticism for even those that are around us and believe the same faith. But you got to remember, it's not our duty to seek the approval from people down here. I wish I had a witness in here. But it is our mission to get the approval for God that sits above everybody else. Just as Moses, Job, and Bartimaeus, they had all this opposition, but we as believers still today in the 21st century have people who look at us Pentecostal apostolic saying we do just a little bit too much. I remember I was at a conference a couple years ago, and it was in Las Vegas, and my team, we went out to eat, and I uh, had a good time, about seven of us at the table. And I get to the table, order our food. Those that know me, I like to eat some good food. Pastor Jason, back me up. And I got there, ordered our food, and you know, I don't know about y'all, but I still pray for my food. Does anybody still pray for their food in here? If you don't, I hope you choke. You should be ashamed of yourself. You got to pray for your food. My mama taught me better than that. So I began to get my food, and everybody just grubs in. I said, let me take a quick prayer. I didn't lift my hand, speak in tongues, and all. No, I didn't do all that. But I simply just lift my head and prayed for my food. And the friend looked at me and go, you even do that in public? I said, yeah. I said, listen, man, if you start choking, don't ask me for no help. But little things like that, when they see small little things of giving God honor and reverence, they seem to have a problem thinking we're doing too much. But can I tell somebody here today, they watch the way you dress. They watch the way you talk. They watch everything you do trying to nitpick and say, I knew you wasn't safe. They're looking for something. You're doing, no, you're doing too much. See, they're looking for something. But I got a public service announcement I want to make in Arizona today. I I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I wish I had more witness to that. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed to be Pentecostal apostolic. I am not ashamed to speak in tongues, to cast out devils, to clap my hands, to jump for joy. I'm not ashamed to be modest. I'm not ashamed to lift up my hands. Every time I come in the sanctuary, do I got about 75 people who are not ashamed to be oneness, one Lord, one faith and one baptism somebody holler I'm not ashamed I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ they think we're being weird and doing too much coming to church on a Friday night can I tell you something we're not being extra we're just being saved I'm not being weird I'm just following the book I don't know about y'all but in Indiana I don't think it's weird to, to believe there's only two genders I wish I yeah, I don't like that kind of preaching here. I choose to believe it's not being weird to say fornication is wrong. Adultery is wrong. I wish I had a witness in here. Does anybody still believe? Come out from among them and be shut. Somebody holler, I'm not ashamed. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. See me running, see me shouting, but you don't know what I've been through. You don't know the stuff I had to carry myself. Uh, somebody holler, I'm not ashamed. Watch this, what I think about when it comes to walking with God, praying to God, 
living for God, praising God, worshiping God, sharing your belief in God. You're going to see some people that are going to criticize how much effort you give God. They tell you're doing too much, but remember this, you're really not doing enough. You owe God more than you could ever repay him. I say that because he has spared my life. He has blessed my family. He's healed my body. I wish I had a witness in here that can lift a hand to Elder Pepper and say, Elder Pepper, I know what you're talking about. I know he's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Somebody say glory. glory. Sit down, sit down. I got 10 minutes. I'm sitting down. In Luke chapter number 17, 10 men are standing outside the city. They all have leprosy. It's a hideous and harness harmful disease that had no cure. It killed the immune system, caused the skin to lose its color breaking off splots and splashes all over their body. It killed the circulation of your body, causing limbs to be infected. Then you die. It was highly contagious. And if you had it, you pretty much had no hope. It was considered the curse of God. These men are standing outside the city, and, and Jesus passes by. Can I stop right there for a moment? Even if the Lord don't stop by my house, as long as he passes by. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. That's why my ancestors used to say, Kumbaya, my Lord. Come by here, my Lord. Somebody holler, pass by me. Because one second of Jesus passing by can change your life. You will experience miracles, blessings, and wonders. Just pass me by. Now, the Bible says he puts his eye on them, and they cry out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He puts his eye on them. That's a whole sermon by itself. His eye is on you. He says, go show yourself to the priest. Then you look at here. One of the reasons I love about this is he says, go to the priest, and they're going to get well. But one reason, I don't know who I'm preaching to, you can't quit while you're going through right now. It's because every miracle doesn't happen instantly. We live in a microwave generation. We want everything right now. But it happens as you keep on going and following the word of God. If you judge your life based on where you are right now, you may not want to keep living. But if you keep on pressing, if you keep on praying, if you keep on trying... If you keep on sprinting in this race called life, you will discover as I keep on going, doors will begin to get open. I wish I had a window in here. Open your mouth in this place. If you're on this journey and a door's getting ready to open, you ought to shout open the door. Bible says as they went, they got healed. Nine men kept going. But one man who, who was a Samaritan, I, well, I want to dig into that, but I ain't got time. He was half Jew, talked about, outcasted, looked at his skin and said, oh, man. I'm looking good. He felt how his circulation was changing. And here is what he did. He hit the brakes and made a U-turn, went back all the way to Jesus. And with a loud voice, he didn't do it cool. Hey, yo, Jesus, right on, man. No, no, he didn't do that. He, he came with some intensity. Has anybody ever got a miracle and all you could do was come to church and go crazy and people saying, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? If you knew what I just got out of, you would understand why I give God this type of pride. He came, he came with a loud voice. He fell at the feet of Jesus. You better go ahead and give God glory. Goodness and mercy is following you. I don't know about y'all. I don't need to wait for a praise team to pump me up. When I think of the goodness... He fell at the feet of Jesus. Just one. Somebody holler, just one. And the nine never showed back up. 
The nine thought it would be extra to make a U-turn and come back. They didn't see it as necessary. Jesus, even in the text, he said, hey, yo, what are others at? Let me pause with that. I'm glad, Pastor Jason, that I'm not Jesus. Because, can I be honest today, y'all? You know what annoys Elder Pepper? Dealing with ungrateful people. I wish I had a, maybe just me, maybe just me. If you agree, just wave your hands at me real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, dealing with, don't look at your kids, dealing with ungrateful, ungrateful people. When you do something for them and they don't even say, thank you. My kid had a birthday today, Riley's birthday's today, y'all. And she wanted to go to the mall, went to the aquarium, and she's expensive. She said she wants some Jordans. I said, Lord, Jesus. What well, the Lord's been providing, we got her her Jordans. But I gave her Jordans. You know, you give your kid a toy, they open it up. As a parent, you want them to be happy, but you sitting there looking. Because you're waiting for your what? You're waiting for your, you, what do you say? I about broke my bank account, what do you say? But you're waiting for your what? I was on a highway, Pastor Jason, and a couple months ago, and it was a good sunny day. I had a great day. I said, you know, we driving. I see the exit coming up, so I get in the lane, and I see a family of five in a, in a van, and they look happy. No tents. See through the car. And they're trying to merge. You see somebody trying to leave from the three lanes to make an exit, knowing good and well you should have been over there. And you know what? I had a great day, and I said, you know what? Come on over. I slowed down, let them cut me through. And as I'm driving, I'm, I'm looking through the back. Because usually, you know, you go. And we kept driving, and a mile went by. I'm like. But I was looking for my. I held a door for a man in a gas station. Older man, had to be in his 80s, and he was slow walking. I held the door for him. And I was going to say, how you doing? He didn't make eye contact. He just walked right past me as I held the door. And I'm looking for my. I wanted to slam the door in the back of his face. But, but the Holy Ghost said, that's not God-like. But I was looking for my what? See, God blesses us with life, health, strength, protection, not just today, but all your life. You know why? Because you're still here. And every now and then, I believe Jesus looks in the sanctuary and he looks around and said, did I not bless the other 100 people in here? The church can have 200 people in here. And he said, why do I only got 30 thank yous when I know I've been a supplier? I know I've been a way maker. I know I've opened doors. I only see 45 people giving me praise. You see, anybody a part of the TYC, Elder Pepper, what's the TYC? The thank you committee. The thank you committee doesn't need a praise team, doesn't need an organ, but they can lift their hands up when they walk in the sanctuary. They got a scripture on the inside that says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Is anybody a part of that thank you committee? You ought to lift your voice. You ought to open your mouth and give God a thank you in this place. The thank you committee, they don't wait for nobody else. They got something on the inside. They don't look at what they feel. Because if I go by what I feel, sometimes I don't feel like coming to church. Sometimes I don't feel like putting on my suit. Sometimes I don't feel like lifting my hands. But it's not what I feel. It's what I know. What do I know? That many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God is is able to deliver you. Could I get a Holy Ghost believer? Just make some noise. Somebody shout glory. You're, you're not showing proper gratitude. If every now and then, Bishop, people around you 
Don't say, why are they doing that? Why are they praising God like that? They doing a lot right now. But why can't they sit down and act normal? Well, it's because you haven't seen the trials God has held my hand through. You was not there when I couldn't pay bills and he sent me money. You was not there when I was sick and he healed me. I don't think I'm doing too much, but I owe God just a little bit of extra. I need about 15 of y'all to believe in your heart. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be shy with it. The devil's not shy sending trials your way why be shy giving God glory on a Friday night he's been too good to me he's been too kind to me he's been too powerful I wish I had a witness in here I owe God you're not doing too much when you pray in public you're not doing too much when you lift your hands up you're not doing too much when you look at someone who's tried to embarrass you and destroy you and you look at them and say what you meant for my bad God meant for my good you're not doing too much when you say any way you want to bless me I'll be satisfied they think you're doing too much but you ought to tell somebody when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me how dare you try to tell me I'm doing too much yes I'm going through yes I'm battling right now yes I've been sad but can I tell you something when my heart is overwhelmed Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Getting ready to close here. But the reason why we're not doing too much because I cannot forget my encounter with grace and mercy. If you've ever encountered grace, it will change your life forever. Have you ever been guilty knowing what you've done and God didn't hold it against you? Instead of condemning you, God let you make it. Have you ever faced your own mortality where you could have died? I wish I had a witness in here. You should have died. Death had the pen ready to write your obituary. But God said, put that pen down, death. I have need of them. You see, grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve well what do we deserve Elder Pepper we deserve the penalty of sin which is death but when I think of the blood of Jesus that's upon my life I gotta lift my hands up and thank him for grace it is grace my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength I feel the Holy Ghost in here is made perfect in weakness all I'm trying to tell somebody is God's getting ready to bless you God's getting ready to bless you God's getting ready to bless you he has not forgot your labor of love but I want to encourage somebody when God gives you the blessing when God gives you the miracle don't forget about him don't forget the one that gave you the miracle don't forget the one that blessed your soul don't forget the leprosy Woo. I feel like running around this church right now they have leprosy bishop highly contagious they are going to die the first part of leprosy You'll be itching and scratching and destroying the immune system, Bishop. Even causing, watch this, the vocal cords to become weak. When they saw Jesus, we think all of them just yelled, Jesus! No, 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 no. no. Leprosy attacks the vocal cords. So you wonder why one said, I need nine more people. Because if we can come together... 
with the same condition. If one voice makes three voices, three, if we keep getting to ten voices, I don't know who I'm preaching to today. Sometimes you ain't going to get out by yourself, but you need a partner. You need somebody else that's going through the dumps because they made a noise together, but the noise was low. But here's a blessing right here. Although the noise was low, he still heard it. I come to tell somebody here today you may have been driving in your car asking God to make a way out of no way but I come from Indianapolis, Indiana to let somebody know he heard you the first time and you can get ready to re- I wish I had a witness on this you can get ready to receive your blessing but you gotta keep hollering they should be dead but they're living. You should be dead. But you're still here. The condition said they should be done. The condition said they shouldn't be heard. But someone is going through a condition in this season where it seems you're not getting better. If you tried everything you know how to do, but it's during these times that we must remember that our current condition does not determine our conclusion. And I cannot let other people determine how I respond when I see Jesus is in the room. This one man is not like the other nine. This one man came back to honor God. Ten were healed. It was the picture of earthly perfection. Everybody say ten. Ten of them walked to the city. Ten of them saw their skin get better. Ten of them saw circulation improve. Ten of them were healed. But it would have been a beautiful story, Pastor, if if nine came back and and one didn't say thank you. That sounds a little better. But nine kept on going. And one said, I got to come back. He was the least of these men, but he thought God enough to say God kept him from death. He heard his prayer. He didn't care about the nod. He said, I got to do this thing for myself. I've never experienced something like this before. I got to get back to the source. I know some of you go through some trials. You try to call your best friend for help. Try to call Bishop for help. But I got to tell you, in this point in your life, you got to learn how to call on the name of Jesus. Some things chicken noodle soup can't kill. Some things Tylenol can't do. But does anybody know how to call on the name of the Lord in the time of trouble? Can I suggest out of 10 people, maybe nine in here, don't really give God thanks like they used to. But there's always one person in a church (laughs) that ain't got no good sense. There's always one, I don't know who I'm talking to, they don't care what other people think about them. They, I wish I was talking to somebody in here. They don't care about the comments. They, they don't care what you say because when they think about God, I think I heard them back there, they say, hold up. I don't care what people think. I got a nice suit on, but look what the Lord has done. I ain't looking for a crowd right now, but I'm just looking for one person in each row. If I could just find one person in each row that would say, oh, the pepper, I'm one of them ones that will say thank you. I know the hell that I caught. I know the stuff that I've been through. I know the stuff that I had to carry. Where is the one who am I preaching to? I need about four people that will open their mouth in here and give God praise and honor and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I and give God some glory and tell God thank you for keeping me tell him thank you for providing for me tell him thank you for opening the door for me for the next 30 seconds just give God some Judah give God some praise give God a Shout! 
you stand up. I'm going to say this one story. We're going to get out. We're going to praise God. Don't let people determine what your gratitude looks like. We get over drugs. We get over mess and lust. The next thing the church got to get over is people. See, everybody say gratitude. It's a word, gratia, in the Latin. We borrow our word gratuity from it. It's reference to give homage for a service that was provided that you don't pay for. You know, y'all look pretty healthy. We all go out to eat. What do we do, Pastor, when we get a good waiter? When you have a waiter that takes good care of you, Gets the order right, had a little personality, may even throw in a backstory. I'm in college, blah, blah, blah. They refill your drinks when you don't even ask them to. Show of hands, how many have experienced a good waiter? Come on, come on. Everybody say a tip. I was in New Orleans, Pastor, two years ago. I'm talking about food again. Pray for me. We are in Louisiana, my first time there. Everybody tell me, you got to get to food. The seafood's amazing. I got to seafood, and I can taste and see that it was good. Yes. So me and my, my, one of my coworkers, he's a higher level than me, and the rule is whoever's ranked higher got to cover the meal. I said, I'm going to keep walking by him everywhere he go. <laughs> so we get to the restaurant. We eat our food, having a great conversation. I've been knowing him for a while. His name is Stephen. And Stephen, we get a call. Hey, we need to go back to the hotel. We got to handle some business. I said, okay. I said, you got it? He said, I got it. He pays for it. He says, you know what? I got cash. I'm going to leave a tip. And Stephen, he puts on the thing zero for tip, right? And he crosses it out. He's good. He gets another call from his wife. He gets sidetracked. He got distracted. Then he says, let's go. So I'm following him. I think he left the tip. So we're leaving, headed to our car. All of a sudden, we hear a voice, hey, sir. And I'm like, I don't talk to strangers. I keep going. I didn't know who was calling us. Hey, sir. We look back. It's, it's our waiter. His name is Raphael. Sir. And he says, what did I do wrong? Stephen looks and says, what do you mean? You were great. We loved you, man. He said, was it my service? What I, did I provide? What did I do wrong? He's like, and I'm like, What's going on here? And he says, well, sir, look. He runs up to us, and he shows us the receipt. The receipt says zero. Stephen had forgot to leave a tip. And he says, listen, ma'am, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Here you go. He gives him like 60 bucks just out of just love because he ran out. He said, I just wanted to make sure I was able to provide good service for you. I looked at that, and as a preacher, I started thinking. I said, what would church look like after every service on a Sunday? You go to your car and all of a sudden, Jesus runs out there and says, sir, excuse me, did I do something wrong? Musicians, let's have a little church right now. He said, hold on, sister. Did I not wake you up this morning? Hold on, brother. Did I not provide for your children? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Why didn't you lift your hands up <laughs> to give me glory? <laughs> but I wonder in here, <laughs> is anybody in this room <laughs> that got a praise right now? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> has made a way for you. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> has opened your mind. <laughs> has he healed your body? <laughs> As he made you whole, would you do me a favor? Give God glory. Give God glory. Where's his tip at? Where's his tip at? He's got the receipt right now. What's on the receipt? Every sin you did, and every wrong you did, but you gotta give him. Jump for joy right now. Do I got anybody to take off running? Do I got a worshiper right now? That will give God praise. Give him honor. 
Where's his tip at? Where's his praise at? Where's